competitors there for the first solo race of the afternoon. It goes up, nice clean start. Christoph Martins made the start, with him goes Torsten Kerr, and uh, it's Torsten Kerr on the outside looking to ride round with Torsten Kerr. Lee Lallan coming up through and trying to find his way through into the action. But out in front then is Steve Dahl who leads. Christoph Martin in there with Lee Lallan right on his elbow. And uh, Christoph Martin looks over his shoulder. And in front, Steve Dawn is there, who's coming down the hill, looks quickly over his shoulder. Lee Lanham in that second spot, Christoph Martin in third, or is he? Because Andy Sell comes to the third. Andy Sell comes to the third, Christoph Martin takes it back again. Right in front there, Steve Dawn, he's actually down to 355 as his champion. He's got a good go, he's going so well, so he pulls out on the far side over there. And it's Jason Handley who's in trouble. But Steve Dorr remains out in front. Lee Lanham in second. Andy Sawyer in third. Christoph Martin in fourth. And in fifth place, of course, is Carol. So the check flag is ready. The man out in front of the gallery is Steve Dorr. Notching up his first uh, maximum of the afternoon. So Steve Dorr is then who goes through. Lee Lanham in second place. Christoph Martin in third. In fourth place. Torsten Curl, and we've lost another competitor that time around. Steve Dahl. In second place, number one, Lee Lanham. In third place, number two, Christoph Martin. Those were the only finishers, no points for Jason Handley or Andy Sell, who was going so well but dropped out on the last lap. So then. That's the first qualifying race over. We look now for the second one. In this one, Mitchell Gordon takes the place of Colin Earl. Gary Lomko, Scott Nichols, Robert Kessler, Andy Bosner, and Charlie Omelenko. So then, they break, they charge down the hill towards me. A foretaste of what we're going to see tomorrow. And uh, Robert Kessler making a good start. But it's Gary Lomko. So the young Cornishman from Yuki, who hasn't had the best of seasons by his very high standards, but having a good ride here. John Nichols gets up in the second place, and the initial leader, Robert Kessler, now in third. Right to Speedway with Ipswich, going after the young Cornish rider, but it's Gary Lobb out in front at the moment. So Gary Lobb then, from Scott Nichols. Robert Kessler is still in third. In fourth place, Charlie Mel Ermelenko and uh, Mitchell Johnson. Next time around, it's going to be Gary Lobb. He just seems to hold him off, but it comes very, very wide off that top end. So it's Gary Long still, just leading from Scott Nichols. These two quite a way ahead now of Robert Kessler. Right behind him, Scott Nichols, and then Mitchell Johnson. And then number 11, Mitchell Johnson. So it's Gary Long then, looking as though he's got the second control, going for a finish here. Gary Long, trying to line around the bend this time. Comes down the hill, victory then for Gary Long. Scott Nichols in second, looking down at the engine. Robert Kessler in third. In fourth place, Charmy and Emko. Behind him, Mitchell Gordon. And Andy Bosner. Number eight, Gary Long. In second place, number nine, Scott Nichols. In third place, number ten, Robert Kessler. In fourth place, number twelve, Charlie Milenko. In uh, Fifth place, number seven, Mitchell Gordon. And in sixth place, number 11, Andy Bosner. And the time for this race, 1 minute 32.86. 1 minute 32.86. Sidecar start for the heat three on this qualification event. And of course, this sees out for the first time, Craig Cheatham, Glyde Reynolds. Sage Davis and Vince Davis, Reg and Colin Blackbourne, Len Foreman, with of course the change of passenger, not Lisa Pinfold, Justin Westaway passengering, Terry Phillips and Chris Spies, Pete Goodwin and Carl Pugh.
So those are the first six to go, and of course all of them would love to get through for tomorrow's event. Anxiously look across to that start line. The starter moves away, the tapes, well, they went up, but straight away the starter indicating that looked to be an unfair start. raised once again, waiting for the five outfits to come into line. The tapes go this time and we get a clean start as they get underway. Terry Phillips from the inside has made a terrific start. So he's saved, he's up there with him and in fact uh, Red Blackboard has missed the start. So we've only got four outfits going into that first bend. Craig Cheatham up in third place at the moment. But as they come round past us for the first time, it's Terry Phillips and Chris Fires that are making the best of the running. Into this top bend for the first time. Craig Cheatham trying to whack his way through. Holds a much, much tighter line than Sage Davis. And there's all sorts of problems for Red Blackboard. You can see Colin desperately trying to work on the engine as they come past us. But a great scrap going on with his second place. Craig Cheatham and Clyde Brown. There's problems to Sage Davis. He now fits momentarily. Stops in the middle of the bend. Len Corman comes through and takes advantage of that and gets up in the third place. Justin Westo looking over his shoulder, knows that Tony Sage will be coming back in him. And look at Craig Cheatham trying to catch up on Terry Phillips. Terrific ride from Craig Cheatham and he finds a gap and goes through. Terry Phillips tries to tuck back underneath, hoping of course that Craig will go wide on the exit of the bend. But Craig Cheatham has got the power on and he now stays in front as he goes into the last lap, into that pit bend. For the last time, Terry Phillips again closes up on him, but he's down this back straight to Craig Cheatham, looks very quick, and as he accelerates down the back straight, it looks as if the gaps are starting to open. Good start to this qualifying for Craig Cheatham and Lowe Reynolds as they come around off that top bend. They're going to see the checkered flag this time, and they're going to take a heat win. So, maximum points on their first line for Craig Cheatham and Clive Reynolds. A winning time for heat three as it is in your program. The first of the side cars, 129.32. 129.32, that winning time. It means a heat win, obviously, for Craig Cheatham. In second place, number five, Terry Phillips. In third place, number two, Adrian Davis. Fourth place goes to Len Foreman. And fifth place, Reg Blackbourne. Your points should read from the top, six, four, two, three, and five. So maximum points there for outfit number one, Craig Cheatham and Clive Reynolds. As we look to the second heat for the sidecars, heat four as it is in this qualifying event, we've got riding number seven, Duncan Tolhurst and Ball Baysby. Number eight is Mick Cave and Dean Bartholomew. Number nine is Mark Surrocks and Rob Surrocks. Number ten, Brett Osborne and Morris Cooper. Number eleven, Richard Thomas and Kevin Woodley. And number twelve, Tim Bennett and Steve Hargreaves. Tim Bennett, in fact, who's the last to come into line. And away we go, a much cleaner start this time. Tim Bennett's made a good start from the centre. Richard Thomas on the far outside has made the best of the start. So Duncan Torres coming through on the inside. Mick Cave right up there as well as he goes to that first bend. But it's Richard Thomas is on very, very wide. Duncan Torres has made much, much tighter, but Richard Thomas has kept the lead. Richard Thomas and Kevin Woodley then lead into that pit bend as they go in there for the first time. Duncan Torres puts it almost sideways, recovers from that, but he certainly held up Mick Cave, went to slow coming into that bend. Mick Cave heads down though in third place, goes after Duncan Torres. Around this top bend for the second time, and again Richard Thomas and Kevin Woodley have gone wide. They're keeping the power on but they're going to have to be careful as they leave those sort of gaps as the race continues. Oh, Duncan Toller starting to try and close. He looks certainly quicker down that back straight, but Richard Thomas has got more than advantage as they go into this top corner. Problems for Brett Osborne and Morris too, but they pull off the third in front of us. Especially again, Richard Thomas has gone wide, but Duncan Toller has not been able to take advantage of it. Mick Cave and 
Dean Bartholomew working hard in that third place. He's sure that something's just not getting away from them. Thomas takes the lead win. Duncan Thomas in second place. Mick Tay finishing in third and Tim Bennett in fourth place. The sidecar heats and a win for outfit number 11. That's Richard Thomas and Kevin Woodley. Maximum points to them. In second place, number 7, Duncan Tolhurst. In third place, number 8, Mick Cave and Dean Bartholomew. In fourth place, Tim Bennett and Steve Hargreaves. In fifth place, Mark and Rob Sarex. And no finish there for Brett Osborne and Boris Cooper. The points for Heat 4 from the top should read 5, 4, 2, 0, 6 and 3. The winning time... 128.10, 128.10. This time, uh, seventh place in the Masters this year for Jason. Had a good year, but uh, problems in his first time in qualifying here. Here we go then. Mitchell Garden making a good start as they go down the hill. Torsten Curl doing it again as well. Mitchell Garden, they thank the Bush Bank of Sunday. Torsten Curl Everybody closes up on the approach to the top there. Side by side as they come round towards us once again. And, and in front, it's uh, Torsten Curl still there. Lee Lanham tucked in behind him. And uh, Lee Lanham tracking uh, all the way. So then, number five, Torsten Curl with the advantage, but coming wide. And Lee Lanham comes through, Lee Lanham goes through, Torsten Curl still in second place, Scott Nichols in third, so the two Ipswich men looking down with one, two, Lee and Nichols goes through, Torsten Curl now back to third, but Lee Lanham has his club, Scott Nichols in second place, and Torsten Curl being pressed again on the far side, so the two Ipswich men coming round towards us with one more lap to go, Lee Lanham in front, Scott Nichols on his elbow, number three, Jason Handley comes through to take third, Torsten Curl in fourth, Lee Lanham it is who wins. Scott Nichols in second place. In third place is Jason Handley. In fourth place, Thorsten Curl. And in fifth place, Mitchell God. In second place, number nine, Scott Nichols. In third place, number three, Jason Handley. In fourth place, number five, Thorsten Curl. And in, and in fifth place, number seven, Mitchell God. Winner's time, one minute, 32.23. Yes, the top six, right? eight solos, six sidecars go through into the final, and it's a sudden death final. The points do not count. Yeah. Had a problem, of course, in his first outing. He waved into place on the starting line. Everybody happy? The game goes up. We have a clean start. And he's out in the middle there. Gary Long making a good start, and uh, it's Gary Long indeed who has to Gary Long and uh, Robert Kessler disputing that first place with the young Cornishman from Newquay with the advantage. So he holds off Robert Kessler in second place. In third place it's Steve Dorr and Andy Sell tucked in behind. Now let's see what Steve Dorr is going to do. Sam and the Steve Dorr we watch during the season. He'll certainly be going after that second spot, I would think. But Gary Long then, out in front, going well here. Still Robert Kessler in second, still Steve Dorr third, Andy Saw in fourth, and in fifth place, Christoph Martin. going after that second spot. He nearly makes it up the inside of Robert Kessler, but not quite. Gary Long, meanwhile, leads as they go into the last lap. Still, Kessler in second place, Steve Dorr in third, and he's going to pull off and just stop last night. So, Gary Long there, and that's still Steve Dorr in second place. Still, Gary Long in third, good victory here this afternoon. He's established uh, quite a commanding lead. Gary Long 
of it is then, who wins? Who's going to get second spot? Just as Robert Kessler in third place, Steve Dorn. In fourth place, Andy Sal. In fifth place, Christoph Martin. In first place, number eight, Gary Long. In second place, number ten, Robert Kessler. In third place, number six, Steve Dorn. In fourth place, number four, Andy Sell. And in fifth place, number two, Christoph Martin. No fifth finisher, no sixth finisher rather. And the winner's time, 1 minute 32.88. 1 minute 32.88. To the sidecar start line once again, we see in action Craig Cheatham, who picked up maximum points for his first ride. Out there with him is Reg Blackburn, who are desperately trying to get some more points this time. Obviously suffering with mechanical problems first time out, only picking up two points. Terry Phillips, rise number five, he got five points with a second place. Duncan Torres, who also got a second place and five points. Mark and Rob Sarax, and of course Richard Thomas, who had the win also first time out. So a cracking race seven, the third of the qualifying heats for the sidecars. They all really could take points off each other in this one. on that start line. The start are not happy with somebody touching the tape, so an outfit being pushed back. Well, of course, they do get away as we cross that far side, and indeed we only have got four outfits, but as they get to that first corner, it is uh, Duncan Tolhurst that's got to the front. Richard Thomas is right there with him now. Remember that Richard Thomas was out with Duncan Tolhurst first time. Terry Phillips has come through on the inside of Craig Cheatham and both of them have gone through on the inside of Richard Thomas. So it looked a good one on paper. It's turned out to be exactly that. A terrific scrap between these four crews. I did mention they could all take points off each other and Duncan Tolhurst knew that. He's got away and got up in front. Terry Phillips closing up on him as he goes to stop there. Craig Cheatham closes on the back of Terry and Richard Thomas has got a tight line this time. That's a much, much better line from Richard Thomas and Kevin Woodley. That's gone up into third place as they try to go through for second as well. They lock it sideways. Craig Cheatham comes through on the inside of them. A terrific scrap between these three crews. Duncan Tolles, of course, has got the luxury of getting away from these three and has got it all to himself at the moment. Richard Thomas place. Oh, Richard Thomas again has gone on the inside line. He's right up there on the inside on Terry Phillips this time. Oh, what will happen on this top bend? This is where he locked it up last time, but he's got through on the inside of Terry Phillips. He's done extremely well on that pit bend. He managed to lock it sideways, but he's kept the power on going down the back straight. So he moves up into second. Craig Cheatham disappointingly back in fourth place at the moment. Interesting to see how these points work out to get them through to the final. But as the checkered flag goes, Duncan Tolhurst gets maximum points. Richard Thomas and Kevin Woodley get second. Terry Phillips in third and Craig Cheetham in fourth. Result of race seven, heat three of the sidecar qualification. A winning time of 128.89. 128.89 and that was a win for outfit number seven, Duncan Tolhurst and Paul Baysby. In second place, number 11, Richard Thomas and Kevin Woodley. In third place, number five, Terry Phillips and Chris Spires. In fourth place, number one, Craig Cheatham and Clive Reynolds. So it's maximum points for Duncan Tolhurst. That gives him six, an overall total of 11 points. Finishing in third place and picking up four points, that's Terry Phillips, a total of nine overall. Craig Cheatham, of course, getting that win first time out with uh, three points from that second ride. He finishes on nine overall as well. As we turn our attention to race eight, the last of the qualifying rides for the sidecars. The runners for the solo final, Jim, are as follows. Number one, Lee Lanham. Number two, Christoph Martin. Number five, Torsten Curl. Number six, Steve Dorr. 
Number seven, Mitchell Gordon. Number eight, Gary Law. Number nine, Scott Nichols. Number ten, Robert Kessler. And that completes the field. Remember, the points do not count in the final. Away we go, and this is the last of the qualifying rides for the sidecars, and Adrian Davis has made a terrific start. Tim Bennett with a much, much better start this time. He's up in second place. Big Cave up in the third corner to go into that first corner. And Big Cave closing right up on Tim Bennett, who holds a very, very tight line. But it is Agent Vince Davis that have got to the front. Good to see the Pete Goodwin is back out there. Problems for Carl in that first one, I think, but good to see they're both back out there. Big Cave moves through on the inside of Tim Bennett to get up into second place on that pit bend. And as we look to the top corner, Big Cave is the leader, but they've gone extremely wide. Big Cave tries to hold a much, much tighter line. Tim Bennett still there in third place. There's problems for Len Foreman. He pulls out in front of us with mechanical problems, but a good ride this from Sage Davis. He picked up a third spot first time out, so he knows a good result here will get him to the final. He's on very, very wide, but he sees that last lap flag. Big Cave closing all the time. Big Cave throws it in very, very hard into this pit bend, looking to get the tighter exit on the far side and he gets the tighter exit and he's much much closer this time and he's got a gap on the inside he moves through oh, so he's david closing he's coming through quickly he'll try and get back underneath him again in that top bend and that's exactly what he's done he's going to be close to the line but it's Mick Cave that takes it Zay davis gets second tim bennett gets his third place back again and pete goodwin in fourth the official result of heat eight for the sidecars. It was a winning time of 130.82, 130.82, and that win was for outfit number eight, Mick Cave and Dean Bartholomew. That gives them the maximum six points, finishing in second place. Outfit number two, Sage Davis and Vince Davis. They get the five points from that heat. Third place goes to number 12, Tim Bennett and Steve Hargreaves. Fourth place, the only other finisher there too, number 6, Pete Goodwin and Carl Pugh. So we now quickly add up all those points. It looks to me like there's an awful lot on nine points. I'm quickly handed the official score chart. And that gives me nine points for number one. And nine points for number two. Nine points also for number five. Eleven points for number seven. 10 points for number 8, 11 points for number 11. And those indeed are the qualifiers for the final. So, going in that sidecar final are number 1, Craig Cheatham and Clive Reynolds. Number 2, Adrian Davis and Vince Davis. Number 5, Terry Phillips and Chris Spires. Number 7, Duncan Tolhurst and passenger Paul Baysby. Number 8, Mick Cave and Dean Bartholomew. Radio's to a piece of paper with a big mark. Well, Lee Lannan, Christoph Martin, Torsten Kuhl, Steve Dahl, Mitchell God, Gary Lawman, Scott Nichols, and Robert Kessler. That's the field. Robert Kessler's been making some good starts. Break. Looks like another good, clean start. Mitchell God gating well in the middle. Steve Dahl on the outside. Gary Long there with him. So it's Steve Dahl from Gary Long as they go around the top bed. Robert Kessler taking the wide line. It was Scott Nichols. Now let's see. Meanwhile, on the far side, already going for home here with Gary Long in his wheel tracks, but uh, it's only a few meters back. So it's Steve Dorr with a very big advantage at the moment. Scott Nichols has gone up into third. Robert Kessler in fourth. Lee Lanham in fifth. And Lee's a little bit of work. Just down as Nichols on the far side. Norton Curl, he's got a problem, he's a long way back now. So it's Steve Dorr who's going to lead uh, quite a handsome lead as they go into the last lap. Gary Long still in that third spot. Scott Nichols. Oh, Gary Long goes down and loses that second spot. Trying to be there for the youngster from Cornwall. So it's Steve Dorr there, building and he's the 
absolutely that he had before. So it's Steve Dorn going to win this and go through into tomorrow's event. Steve Dorn is who wins. Scott Nichols in second place, Lee Lanham in third, in fourth place Robert Castro, in fifth place Christoph Martin, and in behind him it was Mitchell Gott. Well, tragedy there for Gary Lobb. Got back on it, but it looks as though it could only be a reserve tomorrow. We will see. In the qualification competition here this afternoon. In first place, number six, Steve Dorr. In second place, number nine, Scott Nichols. In third place, number one, Lee Lanham. In fourth place, number ten, Robert Kessler. In fifth place, number two, Christoph Martin. In sixth place, number seven, Mitchell Gordon. In seventh place, number five, Torsten Curl. And in eighth place, number eight, Gary Lobb. And the winner's time was one minute, 31.02. One minute, 31.02. Confirm tomorrow exactly who are starters, because uh, some of our competitors we haven't seen today. So we'll have that information for you in the morning, but you know the order in which they'll be considered, and you know the order in which they should go into the program tomorrow. Across to Jim then for the sidecar final. And I just wonder how many people actually got it right and got the right qualifiers going through. Well, that I'll never know, but we look to the sidecars, and going in this final is number one, Craig Cheatham and Clive Reynolds. Number two, Sage Davis and Vince Davis. Number five, Terry Phillips and Chris Spires. Number seven, Duncan Solis and Paul Baysby. Number eight, Mick Cave and Dean Bartholomew. And number 11, Richard Thomas and Kevin Woodley. Wow. So looking for a first fourth place, that will get them through to tomorrow's event. First, second, third or fourth, but the six that could definitely go through. <laughs> again on that sidecar start line. I can see that Adrian Davis has broken away from the start. He now uh, comes back into position. Starter not happy. He now moves away. So happy. The tapes, no, uh, they didn't go up. But Craig Cheatham got the best of the start. Entry into the International Ace of Aces for 1995. Starters again move away, the tapes go up and we get a much cleaner start this time. Look at this who's made the best of it. It's Richard Thomas and Terry Phillips together as they go down that back straight. Richard Thomas on the outside, Terry Phillips on the inside. Richard Thomas loses out, but going wide on that first bend. Mick Cave has moved through on the inside. Terry Phillips has still got to the front, and Richard Thomas goes after him as they go down that back straight. Sage Davis it is that's moved through on the inside and got up into second. Mick Cave is in that very important fourth place at the moment. That top end. I think all of them want to win it by getting the top place through to tomorrow. Terry Burns and Chris Spies going well to get to the front again as they go into this top bend. Sage Davis slides wide in this pit bend and Richard Thomas comes through on the inside. Sage crosses over again and comes through on the inside. McCabe now starts to get close to Richard Thomas. So the four of them again will come together in this top bend. Is going on behind him. Uh, all sorts of problems for Mick Cave on that top bend. And now you can see that Duncan Solist has got back into the action. Duncan Solist has closed right up on Mick Cave and gone round the outside. Oh, Duncan Solist on the outside of Mick Cave. That's the scrap for qualification automatically for tomorrow. Terry Phillips, of course, where he's going to be safe. The others are fighting out in his last bend. As they come to the line, it's going to be very, very close. Terry Phillips takes it. Duncan Solist, in fact, finishes in second place. Richard Solist in third. Well, what incredible ride for Duncan Tolles. It looked as if he was out of it, but just in one lap he goes from a fifth to second. The way in which he's done, the way he's done, he just has no power left at all here. He's got everything down. Well, it's a very good start
indeed, a terrific sidecar race to finish our racing here this afternoon, but doesn't that well and truly set the scene for tomorrow? Well, if you were wondering about the circuit, it's been proved this afternoon, we have a fantastic race circuit here. The official race result of that sidecar final, a winning time of 131.59, 131.59 that time, but a win overall for outfit number five, that of course is Terry Phillips and Chris Byers. Finishing in second place, incredibly, was Duncan Tolhurst, outfit number seven. That's Duncan Tolhurst and Paul Baysby. In third place, number 11, Richard Thomas and Kevin Woodley. Fourth place finisher there was number two, Sage Davis and Vince Davis. And fifth place, the only other finisher, Mick Cave and passenger Dean Bartholomew. That is your qualifiers for tomorrow. The first four automatically go into the lineup. Mick Cave will, of course, be the first reserve. Number two, the most exciting rider last year. He looks like he's enjoying this event. Paul Hurry. <laughs> this could take a while, I tell you. They're enjoying this. Number five. Pleasure to introduce Tony Atkins! Yep. Alongside him, from France, I wonder how the smiles break out when the girls appear, Stefan Tresseau! <laughs> and you can see the smiles again because you know who this is, it's Clayton Williams! A little chap alongside who also is going to be. It's amazing how these smiles keep breaking out. Ladies and gentlemen, Andy Smith. Yay! <laughs> alongside him, from, Czech from the Czechoslovakian Republic, Alice Dribble. <laughs> and then the most successful Ace of Aces winner over the years, six times winner, Steve Schofield. <laughs> and then, number 11 on our program is Jeremy Doncaster. <laughs> and then, another man, <laughs> and the smiles have broken out again. This is amazing, this. Ladies and gentlemen, the man who won the Wimborne one for the other week, Trevor Banks. <laughs> Alongside him, from Holland, the former European grass track champion, Anne van der Hel. And then, who else? From Bristol, it's Steve Bishop. And alongside him, another very, very quick German rider, Ben Dainer. I think we should take the shots from behind, I think. <laughs> And then, Exeter's favourite son. I don't know if he does live in Hereford. Paul Fry! Oh, uh, do you know that? Right. Yeah. And then a Swindon Speedway man, of course, Glenn Cunningham! Yay! Good, we got the, we got the fans over there. just how long these photographs seem to need to take. Uh, somehow nobody wants to break up the clinch <laughs> alongside them. A great favourite in Great Britain and we welcome from the US of A of course, Sam Amalenko! <laughs> Another guy we're pleased to see on the grass track. We don't see a number on the grass track. Mark Lawrence! <laughs> Alain, another competitor from France, Philippe Berger. They're not slow getting into the clinch, it's actually getting them out of it, that's the problem. Ladies and gentlemen, the next rider, Neville Tatum. <laughs> And then, number 24, Bo Brule. 
Just keep walking. To get to the head. Oh no, I'm just clear down there, head on down. Well, this is very interesting, there's the comment was watch this one. I'm not quite sure what that means, but the rider is Simon Wig! <laughs> Alongside him, from Germany, Matthias Kroger! Another competitor we like to see on the grass and on the speedway, it's David Steen! And then, Steve Dorr! <laughs> I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Alongside him, Scott Nichols! Come on, we must have some interest speedway people out there. And then, staying with it, switch speedway, it's Lee Lanner! Then from Germany, Robert Kastner. They're coming round again, you know, I'm convinced they This queue's getting longer. From France, Christophe Martin. Whoa. And then, you can't keep the Goldens out of this. Mitchell Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> and then last, but by no means least, that journey from Cornwall is going to be worth this, isn't it? Gary Love, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I think that completes our solo competitors. I'll move across to Jim and uh, pass over the microphone. And uh, the ladies are coming up, they'll be introduced to the sidecar crews. Yes, Ian, you want to say something? Yeah, you've got your phone back in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've seen all the professional introductions, we've been through some of these world-class riders we got here this afternoon. Now I think the first thing I've got to do is warn Teresa and Michelle that this is where the fun starts. Now you are meeting some of the bravest drivers in the world on 1000cc sidecars. We start, of course, with last year's winners. They are, of course, Ivan Matthews and Peter Jones. What you can obviously say is one of the most successful crews this year. They won the British Masters yet again. They won this event back in 1987 and love to do it again. It is, of course, Roger Mesa and Shane Lapham. I'm not hearing much cheering. I don't think there's many supporters here this afternoon. Well, we should get a big cheer for this one because they're back again. They told us they'd given up, but they have returned. Russell Ng and Paul Urich. Riding number four this afternoon, a man that's been in the world of grass track for many, many years, still a very strong competitor. He won this event in 1990. It's Alan Blewett and Barry Metcalf. We move on to outfit number five and very new to the Ace of Aces. They're going extremely well this year. Rob and Chris Winderburn. Oh, this could be dangerous. Roscoe's been told to take control of Theresa and Michelle. This could be dangerous. <laughs> You're supposed to move them on, Roscoe. You're not meant to leave them hanging on the shoulders. <laughs> right in number six this afternoon, a very, very quick competitor. It is, of course, Rob Wilson and Tony Miles. Another crew that are very new to the Ace of Aces. He's an ex-solo rider, now riding the chairs. It is, of course, Rob Bradley and Jeff Bradley. Now this is what I was trying to warn you of, girls. This is where it starts to get dangerous. Riding number eight, the up-and-coming youngsters, of course, Mark Edwards and Nick Walters. You've got one or two supporters out there, I think, Mark. Crew number nine, they worked all night to get that engine into the outfit after blowing it up yesterday. Dave Steer and Andy Orchard. Now we start to get the cheers from all those down in the West Country as I introduce to you rider number 10, Phil Pittman and Miles Simmons. Outfit number 11, 
we move back a little bit more local. And I'm sure we're going to get a big cheer for this one. Roy Spreadbury and Steve Kensington. Well, you've got plenty of time this time because I've got to do probably the biggest introduction now because by far they have the best record in the Ace of Aces. They won it in 92, 84, 89 and 93. It is of course Steve Smith and for this event, mixed ace in the chair. Who? <laughs> well, I'm not usually seeing this outfit riding number 14. They were second in 1992. I've always wanted to improve on that. John Halsey and Jason Glennie. Uh, <laughs> oh, very, very pleased to see this crew here. They uh, were up on the rostrum last year. And I'm sorry to say, I had an unfortunate accident at Speedway a week ago. But great to see they're competing. John Escock and Matt Sleep. Now our qualifiers from yesterday's event, and that's getting into the event the hard way. The winners of the final yesterday, Terry Phillips and Chris Myers. Outfit number 17 is a crew that have promised me the speed they found in the last lap of the final. They're going to keep up for every single lap today. Duncan Tollers and Paul Baysby. Friday number 18, a little tumble in practice, but they don't look any worse to wear for it. Richard Thomas and Kerry Woodley. <laughs> and of course, as with the solo field, we do have our two reserve crews. I should say, first of all, I've got to introduce number 19, Adrian Davis and Vince Davis. And a faster race than this, actually. <laughs> Just goes to show, you can't predict anything, can you, Jim? Oh, so he is, yeah. No, hang on, Wiggy making a late challenge see, coming out the inside there. You thought there. Calvin was going to do it, didn't you? But there goes Wiggy, look, see, leaving it to the last minute, uh, moves up the back straight. Oh, uh, well, yeah, he'll, he'll get taken on the approach to the next bend, you watch. No, 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 he's got his wheel in front now. Oh, that almost a mistake there. <laughs> Oh, we're going to make it. Yes. Yeah, oh God, now hang on, guys. The finish line is down here. No, oh, I think they've turned right. They, didn't somebody tell them they just have to keep turning left? you think they'd know, wouldn't you, really? Well, we, we did say there's uh, plenty of experience in the hands of these two guys. It is just the two of them, head-to-head, -head, as they always like to say in these sort of competitions. And on the inside, uh, it's like Kelvin sorting out the appropriate rut. Yeah, so you watch Wiggy fly off that uh, European champion of 1995, sorting out his starting line, no problems. And the... Uh, 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 nice to see uh, Mr. and Mrs. Barry Briggs out behind us. Uh, Enjoying the sport, and they're bound to agree with me. There we go, down they break, down they all they go. Wiggy on the outside, right, Wiggy has slender advantage as they go in. First, first bend, first, he's got his side up already. In front, Kelvin Tatum in second place. Let's go. Ah, oh, 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 up the end side, so it's better than ever. Tatum in front. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, he's going wide, wide, he's going wide. Yeah, comes out the inside. Yep, side by side. This is Simon's corner, I can see that. This top right is definitely Simon's corner. Well, he's not allowed to be doing full sense of security in the first couple of laps. Oh, yeah, now here you comes look. Simon. Simon, we'll just get the measure of this top uh, bend. Now. He doesn't like this top bend at all. Top bend now, he's all right. Come on, Simon, you're letting me down here. Well, uh, interesting uh, opportunity to watch this uh, two of the greatest British track racing men in action. Kelvin Tatum with the advantage at the moment. Simon Wigg, a few meters back. Where Simon was. Well, I should think he's worried. There's one more lap to go, and it's Kelvin Tatum still out in front. Simon Wigg in second place. Well, is this a point into the rest of the afternoon, or are we in fact going to see a Say that again, Jim. Well, I said the big point really is, as always, I cannot predict who's going to win it. No, Calvin Tatum wins. I'm a wig in second place. <laughs> so, a, a nice match race there to start our afternoon sport. Kelvin Tatum finishing in first place in a time of 
1 minute 27.49, 1 minute 27.49, and Simon Wick in second place on this occasion, but I'm sure he'll be determined to try and reverse the situation as we move through our racing program this afternoon. What about a tremendous uh, performer on the tracks across France and Germany and Holland. And here we go then into the flying lap, Robert Barr. Won his last title at Klopperberg when he absolutely decimated the opposition. And look at that, whoops, had a little bit of a problem there, overslid a bit, lost a little bit of time I suspect, and in fact is uh, not quite sure what was going on, looking down at the back of the machine there, so had a little bit of a problem for Robert Barr, so I suspect that uh, he may not complete that flying lap, he'll just turn back into the paddock. He's had a quiet sort of season on the grass of late. Let's see if today's going to be Steve's day. He's the man who could do it. So into the flying lap then. How hard on round that then. Down on the knee around that top band. It looks quick. Drifts out a little bit wide on the exit. But uh, it's going to be a fast one. The time for Steve Schofield, 20.35 seconds, 20.35 seconds, so he beats that magic 21 second barrier that we were watching so carefully in practice. Cool. Cool at Australia, the world under 21. Speedway champion, a rider with a tremendous future in front of him. Goes into his flying lap. Takes a very wide approach to that top bend. that top bend and gets away. Yeah, this looks a quick one as well. Tight line. Drifts out a little bit again. And the time for Jason Crump. 21.06 seconds. 21.06 seconds for Jason Crump. Two Masters Championship wins, of course, behind him for Mark. Now well then, let's see what uh, gets down over the tank, long track style. You can see him urging on the machinery as he goes up the tank right there. This looks like a fast time. Let's, uh, this will be an interesting one, I suspect. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Laura has recorded a time of 19.96 seconds. Far and away the quickest time we've seen today. The build up to his flying lap. Interestingly, he didn't want to start from the solo start line, so he's uh, upright style. Now then, this will be interesting to see, yeah. Doubtless he was disappointed to lose that runoff. Let's see what he's recorded. The time for Simon Wig is 20.35 seconds. 20.35 seconds, exactly the same as Steve Schofield. in second place but then went away and won that European grass track and then the world long track. So the time for Kelvin Tatum is 20.10. 20.10. So the winner of the Martin Yates uh, Caravan Barn Record Trophy is Mark Laura. The arrangements, the figure in brackets in the program is the, the gate position. And there must be one or two people who've come to the Aces who've not seen a grass track before. 
If you haven't, you've chosen the right event to come and uh, enjoy because I think we're in for a great afternoon sport here, but uh, there's a great one next week. There's one in Cornwall, we heard, and a lot of us are going across to the bonfire burner. There we go, they're on the start line. Start officials waving it back from the tapes. Remember, touching the tapes is an exclusion offence. So we're working under FIM rules on the starts here. Alistair Immel making a good start. Calvin Tatum right there with him, and it's Tatum up the inside. So it's Calvin Tatum from Alistair Immel and Paul Fry in that third place. Paul Fry then coming up the inside in second place. Colvin Taylor out in front. Paul Fry in second. Alice Dremel fights back. Still Tony Atkin in fourth. Steve Doyle in fifth. And behind him it's number eight, Andy Smith. In 8th place, number 20, Samo Malenko. And the winner's time, 1 minute 28.31. 1 minute 28.31. Those numbers from the top, 1, 17, 9, 28, 8, 5, 6, and 20. To expect, but he's such a capable rider. Glenn Cunningham, another uh, speedway man who's capable of turning in an excellent grass track performance. Clayton Williams coming back to fitness after that injury, but uh, showing at the Whopper that he's capable of a very, very quick performance. Mark Loram, well, we've seen Mark win the bar record, so he's going well. And Scott Nichols, and Scott Nichols came through the qualifying, and it's good to see him in action here in race two. Well, word is that Tony Atkin, in fact, seized his motor. You notice that he dropped right back in uh, race one there. Uh, really bad luck there for Tony Atkin. So then, they're on the line. Star Marshals are content. Off they go. Now then, Jeremy Doncaster making a great start. Clayton Williams right behind him. Neville Tatum there as well. So there we are then, So, uh, <laughs> father and son-in-law, somebody just said, yeah, well, we know what you mean. So, up in front there, Jeremy Doncaster, Mark Loram in second, Neville Tatum in third, and uh, the battle really on that third spot. Look at that going on there. Jeremy Doncaster still in the advantage. Mark Loram in second spot, and uh, watching him every inch of the way. So, Jeremy Doncaster then. The Ipswich Speedway start out in front, and we've got a good team from Ipswich here now. But look at Mark Laura. Mark closing up on him every inch of the way. It goes to the outside. Jeremy keeps it on him. Jeremy in front, final picture. And uh, Mark Laura around the outside. And Mark Laura goes down on the top there. Perfectly okay, but he's overslid. The flags go out, so it's Jeremy Doncaster and Lee, so they go into the last lap. Paul Hurry in second. Scott Nichols comes through into third. Behind him, Ben Cunningham and Clayton Williams down there. Mark Laura gets going again. Okay, that's good. Meanwhile, then, he's going to go through his first victory of the afternoon. Number 11, Jeremy Doncaster 
won the Aces in 1990 and hasn't won a race here. In second place is going to be Paul Harry. In third place is Scott Nichols. In fourth place, Glenn Cunningham. In fifth place, Clayton Williams. And in sixth place, Neville Tatum. Number 11, Jeremy Doncaster. In second place, number two, Paul Hurry. In third place, number 29, Scott Nichols. In fourth place, number 18, Glenn Cunningham. In fifth place, number seven, Clayton Williams. In sixth place, number 23, Neville Tatum. In seventh place, number 14, Anne van der Hel. In eighth place, number 21, Mark Loram. And the winner's time was one minute, 27.91. One minute, 27. Point nine one. The numbers 11, 2, 29, 18, 7, 23, 14 and 21. So race 3 then, sponsored by Steam and Pressure Washer Services Limited and uh, we thank them. You can see their address in your program. The runners then, number 3 Robert Barth, number 16 Ben Dana, number 15 Steve Bishop, number 32 Christoph Martin, number 25 Simon Wig, number 10 Steve Schofield, number 22 Philip Berger, and number 30 Lee Lanham. So they break, it's Simon Wig in the middle, scurry hard after him but there's somebody just ahead of him. Robert Barth takes it as they go into the top end now. Simon Wig got the advantage of the title line, but no, it's Robert Barth out in front. Simon Wig in second. Steve Schofield in third. Really going for a look at Steve Schofield. So then, it's Robert Barth in front, Steve Schofield in second, Simon Wigg in third. Lee Lanham in that fourth spot, and Robert Barth then. Really going to the last the form here. So as they go into the last lap, it's Robert Barth leading from Steve Schofield in second place. It's Simon Wigg in third, it's Lee Lanham in fourth. In fifth place as they go past that, it's Philip Berger. And Robert Barth it is then is going to score his first victory of the afternoon. Steve Scarfield in second place. Summer Wig in third. Lee Lanham in fourth. And in fifth place that looks like Philip Berger. First place, number three, Robert Barth. In second place, number 10, Steve Schofield. In third place, number 25, Simon Wig. In fourth place, number 30, Lee Lanham. In fifth place, number 22, Philip Berger. In sixth place, number 15, Steve Bishop. In seventh place, number 32, Christophe Martin. And in eighth place, number 16, Ben Dana. And the winner's time was one minute, 28.12. Those numbers quickly, 3, 10, 25, 30, 22, 15, 32, and 16. Time again, 1 minute, 28.12. David Steen, Thurston Curl, Mitchell Gott, Matthias Kroger, Trevor Banks, Bo Brill, and Robert Kessler. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure whether he told you that uh, number 19 was uh, Thurston Curl, who uh, was in the qualifying event uh, yesterday, but he is indeed. Uh, he goes uh, in this one with Mitchell Gottman, David Steen, Jason Crump, Matthew Scooter, Trevor Banks, Bo Brule, and Robert Kessler. And Bo Brule making a good start, and it's Bo Brule, in fact, who leads the field as they go around our first round. 
Obviously, we gave them to you as qualifiers from yesterday. Number 16 is, of course, Terry Phillips, passengered by Chris Spires. And number 17 is Duncan Toller, passengered by Paul Baysby. Now, those two outfits obviously have had experience of racing here yesterday. They know the measure of the circuit. Rustling, as we've been continually saying, the birthday boy is on the fastest time for the lap times we were taking in practice. So many people, I'm sure, are as pleased as I am to see Russell back out there again. And Dave Steer, of course, having completely changed the engine overnight from practicing here yesterday. Pleased to say he does join the lineup. So we start with the first race for the sidecars. Race five in your program, as Tony's mentioned, sponsored by Mick Potter. And away we go, it's a good clean start. We look across that far side, it's Russell Ng that's made the start. Phil Pittman is right there with him as they go into that first bend. But Russell it is, it noses out in front as they go into that first turn. And Russell Ng still with the lead. Phil Pittman right there with him, but it is Russell Ng that leads coming past me for the first time. Alan Blewett goes round the outside of Phil Pittman going into this pit bend. Terry Phillips is right out there with them as well. So Phil Pittman got a challenge coming from the outside and the inside, but Phil Pittman and Miles Simmons hold that second, or do they? Alan Blewett goes down the outside and gets up into second, but at the moment it's still rustling and Paul Urich to the leading. And they come off that top end, opening up quite a gap now on second place, which is turning out to be a great dice between Alan Blewett and Barry Metcalf, who've just got second from Phil Pittman and Miles Simmons. Phil Pittman looking to hold a very tight line on that pit bend, but it's down that back straight that Alan Blewett gets the advantage. Into the top bend they go for this, the entry to the last lap for the first race in the afternoon for the sidecars. And I'm anxiously watching to see if Dave Steer can move his way through. He's in fourth place at the moment. It goes for third as he goes round that top bend. Oh, we know of old that Dave Steer is a terrific tight line rider. And we wonder, will he make a challenge? But Phil Pittman's not happy with that. He's coming back at Dave Steer. But as we look to see the first second flag for the sidecars, it's going to be a win. And a return to racing for Russell Ng and Paul Urich. Alan Blewett gets that second place. Very, very close for third on the line, but what a terrific start to the day for the rustling fans. Of the sidecars and a win for outfit number three, it's rustling and Paul Urich. In second place, outfit number four, Alan Blewett and Barry Metcalf. Third place, number nine, Dave Steer and Andy Orchard. 
In fourth place, number 10, Phil Pittman and Miles Simmons. In fifth place, number 16, that's Terry Phillips and Chris Spires. And in sixth place, number 17, Duncan Tolhurst and Paul Baysby. The winning time there, 126.14. 126.14, that's the time we've got to watch as we go through the rest of these first leg rides. The additional rider to put in, that's number 19, that's Adrian Davis and Vince Davis. Uh, Adrian and Vince come in from that qualifier yesterday. And we see for the first time Rob Bradley, John Hiscock, John Halsey, Rob Winderburn and Mark Edwards. <laughs> for the start of race six. I can see that Mark Edwards has got that outside gate. Oh, we we'll try and keep an eye on that as the racing goes on through the day to see whether there is any advantage to gate positions. Of course, these clutch starts so very, very important in this short track racing. the best of it, John Halsey certainly had a very good start, Rob Bradley is right up there with him and it is indeed Rob and Jeff Bradley that have got to that first bend, but Mark Edwards flying around the outside as they go into that first turn Rob moves out slightly, allows John Halsey to find a way through on the inside, Mark Edwards still challenging back there in fourth place and as they all group together coming round that pit bend it's Rob Bradley that's still got the lead, but John Halsey comes underneath him going down that back straight Terrific exit from that pit bend for John Halsey and Jason Benny. But Rob Bradley has come back in him again, riding around the outside on this top corner. Terrific sidecar scrap we've got in this one. As indeed they go into the pit bend. Rob Bradley still with the lead. John Halsey again trying to fight back for it as he took the advantage going down that back straight. But Rob Bradley is what he's doing this time. John Hiscock and Matt Sleek right up there in third place. Rob Winderburn in fourth at the moment. And Mark Edwards back in fifth. As we go into the last lap, this is a terrific start of the day for Rob Bradley and Jeff Bradley. Their first time in the Ace of Aces. And what a good show they're putting up at the moment, showing exactly why they felt they were justified coming into this entry. Rob and Chris Winterburn going well as well. Their first time in the Aces. John Halsey knew nothing about Rob Bradley at the moment as they come round off that top end. It's going to be a win for Rob and Jeff Bradley. They take it. John Halsey and Jason Genny get second. Rob and Chris Winterburn get third place. John Hiscock in fourth and Mark Edwards back in fifth. A win for outfit number seven. That's Rob Bradley and Jeff Bradley. In second place, number 14, John Halsey and Jason Glennie. In third place, number five, Rob and Chris Winderburn. In fourth place, number 15, John Hiscock and Matt Sleep. In fifth place, number eight, Mark Edwards and Nick Walters. Sixth place, number 19, Adrian and Vince Davis. The winning time, 128.46. 128.46, that winning time. So we turn our attention to race seven. This is the third of the sidecars. And what a lineup we've got for race seven. Number 18, of course, is Richard Thomas and Kevin Woodley. But coming to that line is Roger Misa and Shane Lapham. Rob Wilson and passenger, of course, Tony Miles. Ivor Matthews and Peter Jones. Roy Spreadbury and Steve Kensington. Steve Smith. And, of course, we must remember today, Mick Stace in the chair for Steve. So very important that the riders get a good result first time out. As we look across that far side, Ivan Matthews has made a good start, but it's Roger Mesa that's got his outfit in front as he gets halfway down the straight. Richard Thomas is right up there in second place, but it is Roger Mesa that's got to the front as they go into that first turn. Richard Thomas goes wide, he's allowed Steve Smith and Ivan Matthews to come through on the inside of him. 
Oh, Richard Thomas comes back in Ivor Matthews, but Ivor holding a very, very tight line. Drives hard underneath Steve Smith, but Steve Smith with the advantage going down that back straight. But it is Roger Mesa and Shane Lapham, our British Masters title holders for 1995, who've got the lead at the moment as they come off that top turn. Steve Smith up in second place. Had such a good history with this event. The only driver to have won this Ace of Aces title four times. And then he'd love to make it a fifth this afternoon. As he goes down the back straight, he's starting to close up on Roger Mesa. The gaps, I'm sure you can see on the far side, have started to close. Roger Mesa now knows that Steve Smith is there, and Steve gets a much better line on that top end. They go into the last lap, and Roger Mesa going for the faster, wider lines. Cuts back across on that pit bend. Ivan Matthews is not far away from those two either. As they go down the back straight, Steve Smith has got that inside line again. He's going to go through on the inside. Terrific ride from Steve Smith and Big Stay. Now they know I've got to try and hold it tight as Roger Mesa will come back at them as they come to the line. But it's going to be a win for Steve Smith. Roger Mesa takes second. Ivan Matthews takes third place. Rob Wilson in fourth. Richard Thomas in fifth. Oh, what a tremendous sidecar race it looked in prospect, and it turned out to be exactly that. For outfit number 12, that is of course Steve Smith and Mick Stace. In second place, number two, Roger Mesa and Shane Lapple. In third place, number one, Ivor Matthews and Peter Jones. In fourth place, number six, Rob Wilson and Tony Miles. And fifth place, number 18, Richard Thomas and Kevin Woodley. Sixth place there, number 11, Roy Spreadbury and Steve Kensington. And that winning time, 124.22. 124.22, that winning time. Here we have Bo Brule going, and we have Kelvin Tatum going. Two previous winners going in race eight. They're joined by Steve Schofield, Matthias Kruger, Neville Tatum, David Steen. when the yellow flags went out on the top bend. Uh, two riders were judged to have uh, overtaken, probably just because they didn't actually spot the flags quickly enough. So we'll give you that change in a moment or two, but uh, meanwhile, let's concentrate on race eight. That's another nice, clean start. Kelvin Tatum down the outside this time, and Kelvin Tatum goes into the first bend, and Bo Brule is right back in the pack. He's only like six or seven at the moment. And it's the field is in second place. So then the cheers rise for Steve Schofield, popular local speedway rider in pool, of course. But it's Kelvin Tatum out in front. Steve Schofield in second. Neville Tatum in third. And David Steen, I think he was up into fourth place. Looking to close up on Bo Brule, who's just ahead of him. Meanwhile then, Colin Tatum out in front. Steve Scarfield in that second place. David Steen, indeed it is, in third. Lee Lanham in fourth. man at his best. This is Kelvin Tatum really going for home on this last lap. Still Steve Schofield keeping the pressure on in second place. Then Dave Steen, then Lee Lanham, then Matthew Kruger, and then back a little way to uh, Kelvin is coming around that top there, heads down the hill, but it's Steve Schofield keeping the pressure on in that second place. Finishes in second. In third place, number 27, David Steen. Behind him, number 30, Lee Lanham. And then number 26, Matthias Kruger. Of race eight. In first place, number one, Kelvin Tatum. In second place, number 10, Steve Schofield. In third place, number 27, David Steen. In fourth place, number 30, Lee Lanham. In fifth place, number 26, Matthias Kruger. In sixth place, number 19, Torsten Curl. No seventh rate finishes, and the winner's time, 1 minute, 27.49.
This one's sponsored by R.A. Bowers at Parkston Pool, the non-ferrous scrap metal merchants. And in this, number 32 is Christoph Martin. Number 25 is Simon Wig. Number 5 is Tony Atkin. Number 16 is Ben Dana. Number 2 is Paul Hurry. Number 7 is Clayton Williams. Number 22 is Sulin Berger. And number 31 is Robert Kessler. A set of keys in the paddock. If anybody's found a set of keys, could they hand them in to the secretary's caravan, please? There we go. They come charging down the hill towards us. Simon Wig having a little bit of a moment there, but hanging on grimly. That is Clayton Williams with the advantage. Simon Wig on the inside takes over the lead from Clayton Williams, but there's a real struggle going on for that.
dancing away, hoping that uh, Mark Long will make a mistake. Still Stefan Tresseau in third. Steve Bishop in fourth. Steve Dool in fifth place. Finishes, or is somebody else going to upset things and make this points competition very interesting indeed? John Halsey, of course, had a terrific ride first time. And Roger Misa was beaten by Steve Smith, so both of those crews will be anxious to get a race win this second time out. Start 
does pull them into line, up go the tapes and away we go once again, looking to see who's made the best of the starts, and across that far side, it is Alan Blewett that's made the best of the starts, he gets to that first bend in first place and Roger Misa follows them in, in second, Rob Wilson up there on the inside of Roger Misa, comes through as he comes down past us, Alan Blewett and Barry Metcalf it is though they've got the lead, Roger Misa forced to go very wide, that leaves a gap for Rob Wilson to come through, and as Roger Misa finds a gap on the inside of Alan Blewett, he now moves through into the lead. Alan Blewett then in second place, but under pressure from Rob Wilson straight away as they go into that top bend. Roger Misa and Shane Lapham in front where they were in their first heat, because they were caught in that first heat. Rob Wilson has moved up in a second. John Halsey now starting to move up as well, looking to get up into that third spot. But Alan Blewett fighting back and hangs on to it at the moment. So Roger Misha, exactly where he wanted to be. He knows that it was second place first time out. He'll want to get a win this time. And Rob Wilson not letting him get away. Scrap developing for this third place as John Halsey closes right up on Alan Blewett. Much, much tighter line this time from Alan Blewett, but he's drifted wide on the exit of the bend. John Halsey looks for the gap, but himself loses that back wheel. Loses drive and lets Alan Blewett go away from him again. So it'll be the chequered flag this time as they come round, but this is the first off the second leg rise, and it's a win for Roger Meester and Shane Lapham. Rob Wilson gets that second place, and John Halsey, I think, just squeezed through to get that third place. Prize for the sidecars, a win for outfit number two, Roger Misa and Shane Lapham. In second place, number six, Rob Wilson and Tony Miles. In third place, number 14 was John Halsey and Jason Glenny. And in fourth place, number four, Alan Blewett and Barry Metcalf. Fifth place then, number 16, Terry Phillips and Chris Spires. And sixth place, number 18, Richard Thomas and Kevin Woodley. The winning time, 125.80. 125.80, that winning time. What it